On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about PTs communicating with surgeons, we talk about PTs working as strength coaches, and we give some recommendations on some books you should read before heading into physical therapy school. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up here in Boston, Mass. Mass. Whatever. Boston, Mass. Wicked kid. At Champion, PT and oh. Performance Kid. See, I can turn on the accent if I want to. I, like Lenny, it's, Do I sound like that? Lenny's character always has that accent. <laughs> my, I have multiple roles in my character. We're having a silly day my today. My accent is fast. Let, let's go backwards. I'm here in Champion with with Dan Pope, FitnessPainFree.com, Dave Tilly, ShiftMovementScience.com, and Lenny Macrina. ChampionPTPerformance.com. <laughs> Google.com. <laughs> Give me some time. Google. He's, he's on Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> AOL. <laughs> hey, 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 we're here with JoJo Coplo from Stony Brook and Travis T Bone Step from University of Kentucky. Uh, what was the other one we said? KFC? KFC, KFC no, no. from the University of Kentucky. Some good friends of ours there. So awesome. Who's that? Travis? You starting it up? Uh, sure. Let's do a T-bone. Okay, so first question, Vian Vu from San Jose. Hey Mike, great post from Lenny on ACL graft choices. Great to consider the info for Slow rehab. Mark. Would we use this info to educate surgical candidates or would that anger surgeons if a patient's choice based on info is different than surgeon's choice? How do we avoid stepping on their toes in regards to all scenarios like this? <laughs> so th th this is a good one, Len. So let, for those that don't know, Lenny wrote a fantastic article on my website, I don't know, like a month ago. Well, I, you could be listening to this in six years, I guess. I don't know. In the, 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 the spring of 2017, Lenny wrote an awesome article on my website. You should check it out. But it's about ACL graft options and talking about the pros and cons of them. So this is a great question. I feel like I've gotten this question a ton of times with like some DMs online or just some people tweeting at us or something like that. It's like, like uh, uh, PTs want to say, like, all right, what do we do with this info? Do I tell patients what to do? Like, right. uh, what do you tell them, Lenny? I, uh, I do. I tell patients what to do. Uh, just knowing you, you get a, a kind of a feel of the, of the surgeons in the area who they're going to see. You hope you can see them pre-op because we know that the outcomes are better if we can do some pre-op rehab on them, but that's a different uh, that's a different blog post for a different time. I think educating the person going into the surgery is huge. I do it on a daily basis, I feel like, when I see a pre-op ACL and give them the pros and cons and trying not to, you know, put your spin on things. The research, to me, is pretty clear-cut for younger athletes that the patella tendon is the gold standard, yet I'm seeing a ton of hamstring autographs, and I'm seeing a, a decent amount of allografts that come through the door. And to me, you know, we, we talk about it all the time here. To me, the research just does not, does not scream to do those other options. To me, it's patella tendon. And quad tendon, in my opinion, is a very good option that I think not a lot of surgeons are doing for some reason, and I don't know. I'm trying to pick the brains of some of the surgeons I know to figure that out. But so, so when the patient comes in when, and says, "What do I do?" Yeah, I'm, uh, it depends on their goals, depends on their age, it depends on their previous history, depends on the structures that are involved. But I'm taking all that into consideration, and I'm going to begin at a patella tendon, and I'm going to work my way through, and to maybe <laughs> maybe work it down. And so I I agree with Lenny. I believe education is powerful. You need to yeah. know these things here. But there are some things we got to consider. Right? If you go in there, guns blaring to your right. doctor and saying, yeah. "I want this because my therapist right. said so," yeah. I think that's I think that's challenging for the therapist. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, my two cents is that I think that it is important that we're the people who know these things because more and more. I mean, sometimes they don't see a doctor for two weeks. You know and they're really like Google, you know, is like their worst enemy. So I think that we yeah. have people all the time. I have like people who are like, we'll tear their ACL and like literally like next day text me like, hey, like someone tore their ACL. Like, what do you think? Like, we're kind of scared. And like, just like talking about that stuff is important. But two, I think is like you had just touched on. I think if you present it in a way that's a little bit more, uh, you know, tactful, I think that the surgeon is like, wow, this PT considers graft options and like knows research. Like, wow, this guy's like, you know, maybe he's helpful. And I think if you don't like, like you said, kick the door in. I think 90% of doctors are going to be pissed at you still. Yeah. If you're trying to exert bias. No, I don't think I'm, bias. I'm, I think Lenny said just like the overview of what the literature presents. I, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I don't I'm know. Young and naive. I, is, is maybe our role if a, if somebody comes to you and says, "Hey, the the surgeon I said I could do either A or B," and we help them with that? Versus, man, I I'm I'm super worried if 
you, if we go, I mean, let's not say names, but imagine a doctor. Yeah. There's plenty, right? And imagine a patient's telling him, hey, Dave Tilly just said I should do quad tendon or whatever like that. And the guy's like, what? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if they can handle that. I, think I don't think it's <laughs> like that I said so. I like, I was at my PT and we talked about there's a lot of different graft options and they have pros and cons. But you can't control how the patient That's phrases true. it. And they're going to phrase it that way. When he yeah. says, hey, I want to do, he or she says, when you want to do hamstring, they say like, well, I want, you know, I don't know. I yeah. heard from my therapist that quad tendon's better. They're going to be, yeah. they're going to be annoying. That, I'm going to spin that a little and maybe make people upset especially docs but maybe i don't want to work with that doctor if he can't right um good point handle my opinion and he is he or right. she he or she is set in their hamstring autograph way or like we talk about a lot here there's some docs that are all allografts high level athletes getting cadaver grafts and to me that is not a good option for them there's so many reasons why the that's literature is point. screaming it and i just don't know if i want to work with that, that, that group oh that's a good point if you're i mean if you have a real strong preference or or and, and uh, preference is the one where you, know, you right. have scientific evidence saying allograft's a bad idea for an athlete, right? right? And then maybe you jump in there, but I still think you got to be tactful. But one thing I really think this is something you guys are showing me. I just want to. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. Um, you got to find a good doc, right? You need a doc to right. trust. I mean, we see right. this all the time. You see a bunch of baseball players. Sometimes some surgeons will over tighten these guys, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We see a lot of people that go to um, a surgeon has no idea about CrossFit, and then they end up with problems because the, the surgeon didn't realize what they wanted to get back to. Right. Right. So I think a lot of times it's not just us educating them about the certain types of grafts, where it is. We got to give them to the right doctor. We got to right. trust the right surgeons. I mean, the right surgeon with the right uh, information about research that does this every single day. That's done it for years and years and years. You know, we're going to look up to someone who has good experience. Like like that right um, so a lot of times I think it's not like just educating people at the graph but just like nudging them in the right direction as far as the doctors you trust that's a good point yeah. there are many yeah. surgeons that are willing to talk to the PT and just like just talk about whatever talk about different surgeries talk about different rehab uh, protocol so to speak I had a great talk last week with a doc from Children's Hospital here in Boston awesome loved it building that rapport with that guy but then there's many docs that are just set in their ways just like PTs and, or any other profession and they just don't want to hear it that's what they've been doing for 20 years it works it's tried and true and that's it you're not going to break that wall so you know nice all right so i guess in summary tread lightly but, tread lightly, but, but the, respect the research yeah. and educate yeah you're a professional you have a you have a valid point go yeah. all right let's roll zach from pittsburgh can a licensed physical therapist coach athletes at a performance slash strength and conditioning center without a referral if so, what limitations does the PT face? Is direct access limited to 30 days? Okay, so a, P, a PT doing strength training. All right, yeah, you got like two two stuff. weird things in there. So let's break this up and first say, can a physical therapist do strength training as a strength coach? Uh, the answer in Massachusetts is definitively yes. Because mm -hmm. um, one, you're definitely qualified. Two. Um, Anybody off the street, <laughs> and there's, and there's, there's no licensure. There's no like anything in Massachusetts that says you need to get licensed to be a strength coach or a personal trainer. Uh, some states, maybe some states, do you have to get licensed by the state of Kentucky <coughs> or New York? Do you know? Um, not that I know. Not a, so, I so. so I, I would say the answer is yes. The second part of you about direct access and stuff is the second this isn't injury rehab yeah. and it's not insurance based. Direct access doesn't direct matter. Access Thirty cash days, cash. any whatever else you said, none of that really mattered. Yeah. But that being said, do you ever, what, do you, what do, you, do you ever just do strength stuff with people? Well, here's it. But you were yeah. a strength coach first. Yeah, well, that's tricky. That's you different. The first through. thing I think about that question you're asking is that most insurance companies are not going to cover anything sports based in general. That's people a good get point. This yeah. All the time. Like, right. As soon as you like jump with a patient, you're like, whoa, we don't cover jumping. That's too much. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, we cover <laughs> so dressing and bathing. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. So, yeah I school think you guys be <laughs> really careful with that. If you're going to be trying to, to get insurance coverage, you got to be clear about the insurance is actually covering, and that's probably the most important thing. Uh, and that would happen a lot in my clinic. People would come in and they're like, oh, I just want to like get evaluated, work on some sports performance stuff, and I want my insurance to cover it. It's like, we can't do that. I'm right. sorry. That's a good point. It's going to come back on me. That being said, this is why this we have a great situation here because I'm free to do as much strength and conditioning work as I want. You know, right. it's just that we got to be careful about insurance. And right. Coach two hour workout. I, I, would, I would say the only thing I would throw in here just to add to that too is I'd say, as a physical therapist, are you really? the best option for them to, I, I, I'm a physical therapist, I'm a strength coach, Dave's a strength coach, 
right? Dan's a strength coach. <laughs> I mean, we're all strength coaches. You're strength coach. We're all, we're all sorry. We're all strength coaches here. Um, I I don't. I mean, the strength. The primary profession of being a strength coach is going to do a much better job as you. I would really urge you to find people to collaborate with instead of to trying to take on the world yourself. You certainly wouldn't be happy if the pitching coach you're working with or the golf instructor you're working with were trying to give corrective exercises to someone. Right? That's not specific to that. Don't flip the switch and try to do it yourself. I would kind of. Just Dan say that. has a whole online strength and conditioning business that he works under. So, like, you are doing yeah. strength and conditioning type stuff, and you're and, good at it, and yeah. people seek you out. That's, like, your primary thing. So I think yeah. people can do it if that's your niche, so to speak, and they understand that they're getting a wellness type, I want to get strong. I, I think there's you know? a there's a I, I definitely we should do strength conditioning in PT and we do it as oh, part yeah, of our yeah. rehab. D- to me, the difference is Dan was a strength coach before he became a physical therapist. Right. So he's actually th- this is like the PT. It sounds like here if he, if you're talking about direct access, then you don't yeah, you don't get like strength you're training. PT it's confusing the world. Yeah, with something. like Something's going on. I think you should collaborate with some and strength look coaches. at your state practice act so. because that's going to be that's going to trump everything. All right, let's that's go. Like let's go number three. What do we got? T bone. All right, so the next one is Thomas from Vancouver. We'll be going for a Master's of Science in Physiotherapy in Scotland this coming January. Sweet St. Andrews. While I have looked at particular reading lists for my future classes, are there any big rock prerequisite physical therapy, anatomy, physiology books that you believe a prospective student should read before going into physiotherapy school? All right, let's flip this around. Let's all pick one book. We'll say one book that you think of PT students. Grey's Anatomy, but not the book, the show. <laughs> On Netflix, Real life. especially season three Scrubs. through four. <laughs> anatomy, boy. Well, not anatomy, a, 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 a book to prepare for PT school. Oh, okay, gotcha. Green eggs and form. I'll, I'll start. Um, Dale Carnegie, how to how to win friends and influence people, because you're gonna get all your 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 education in school. You got to learn how to communicate and talk to people. Uh, mine's kind of similar. I was gonna say ego is the enemy, but right Yeah, Holiday. yeah. The new that's a good good if way I'd to start your career. Before I started school, things would be a little bit different. Yeah, I like that. Ego is the enemy. I like that. Who's the uh, author again? Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday. What obstacles to ways is all really good. I, th- I thought it was. I thought uh, great great books. Yeah. I'm going to flip it around too a little bit. I think it's it's too hard to pick just one book that's going to help from like an anatomy perspective. Um, I this is a podcast, but I I started listening to something called the I Love Marketing podcast. I think it's it can be very different for anyone else, but I think as physical therapists, we need to learn how to market ourselves a little bit better. Right. Because in general, it's not just you need to get more people through the door, but you got to convince people that you're good. Right. One of the biggest things that you need as a physical therapist is just to convince that person that the information, the advice that I'm giving is actually going to help them. If you can't do that, then they're probably not going to get better, even if you have the best possible advice. So I think that um, physical therapists, two things, need to get better at marketing themselves, being better entrepreneurs, and also selling themselves to people. Nice. That's That's three things. Yeah. Technically, if we're well, counting, but I like it. Yeah. I, th- to that point, I, um, to sell is human. I think yeah. I believe that's that Daniel Pink. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's Daniel. But to sell is human is right on that point. It just talks about how look, it's all sales. Everything you're you know you're trying to do. If you're trying to manipulate them in the quad tendon graph because you have a, 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 an investment in a company Sell them on their that own sells program. quad tendons. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quad awesome. So all right. So <laughs> I think moral of the story is is um, why don't you actually use this time to diverse yourself. Yourself, right, and become a better a communicator, better human, better marketer, and just learn all the academic stuff. That'll help yeah, you definitely. more than anything else. So, uh, that's three, right? Yep. Awesome, good. I like it. Good, awesome. All right. Well, thanks so much, again. guys. We appreciate it. Head to iTunes and please subscribe, rate, and review us. And we appreciate that. Go to MikeReynolds.com and click on the podcast link and ask us more questions. We're here. We'll answer anything you guys want to talk about. We're having a blast. So let's keep it up, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.